Oh, hi there. Chandra Easton here from StarAstrologyHealing.com. I just wanted to speak to you today about um, some of the wonderful um, highlights of my travels through the top end of Australia and into Western Australia. Travelling in 2021 um, throughout this ancient land has been um, such a deeply um, connecting experience for me. Uh, and what I've noticed as I've travelled is that there are many um, natural wonders to be seen, to behold, and, and they do something to the heart. They, uh, they, they give me peace. And uh, in, a, in a time when we're going through such global upheaval and transition and when um, seemingly all the um, shadow aspects of the human nature and human psyche are uh, are there on display in our news media. It, it, there's never been a more urgent time for us to um, treat each other well and uh, connecting to the heart of Earth. Uh, this is the second of the um, Heart of Hope series. The first one was on Central Australia. So I'd uh, left um, Central Australia and was following um, uh, the track, as the Territorians call it, and this is the uh, the road, the highway, the main highway that goes from Alice Springs up uh, to Darwin, and I come to Nitmaluk. And Nitmaluk's a, a national park, uh, not far from the town of Catherine, and I'd gone out um, uh, to the national park specifically connect to connect into the. Um, uh, the gorge out there. Well, there are there are I think it's about eleven gorges. And I took a boat tour uh, down the Catherine River, and uh, the majesty and the colour and the beauty, and in the early morning light was incredibly beautiful and will stay with me. Uh, and I know one of the things that um, really woke us up to the fact that. Um, nature's in charge was uh, a very small little freshwater crocodile probably about a three metre one that was sunning itself on the um, the banks of um, uh, the river when about uh, I don't know 50 tourists were disembarking from the boat and uh, our tour guide said to us that he'd been doing this tour for uh, many years and had never come across a freshwater crocodile sitting at this point seemingly like um, to, to greet us. I don't know who got the bigger shock, uh, the little freshwater crocodile or the 50 tourists and I was up the front of the tourists and so uh, uh, did um, have a pretty close look and I took this as a totemic, you know, uh, the, the, the crocodile's the totem of this region and so uh, it was kind of like um, stay awake, be alert continued up um, the gorge further along in the boat and came to this very deep, still, restful place. And this is the place where the, um, the rainbow serpent, the, uh, the sacred um, being who's created this terrain, these gorges, these rivers, these mountains, back in the dream time, where, where the, the dream time uh, serpent, rainbow serpent resides. And of course I'd been um, connecting into the rainbow and the rainbow serpent further south in central Australia and I just wanted to mention this particular part of the gorge because of its power and beauty and stillness and potency. It's a vast country Australia. I don't think I'd ever really um, recognise this until until I took it upon myself and just got this kind of crazy idea that I'd drive around and have a look at the country. Well, in Australia, we call this uh, being a grey nomad, you know, and it's a bit of a tradition. I suppose back in the 70s, my generation would hit the road and go to Asia. And now the same generation have um, hit the road going around this country, the grey nomads. Well, I'm not all that grey, but I'm certainly um, old enough and uh, uh, certainly nomadic enough to take the adventure. Further north I found myself up in the Kakadu National Park and uh, I went north out of Jabiru uh, to the region known as the East Alligator River. 
and this region had a profound effect upon me. Uh, you can see from this map here that Kakadu abuts um, Arnhem Land, the western part of Arnhem Land, and uh, the roads turn to four-wheel drive, and uh, it's impossible to get into Arnhem Land unless you're on a tour or with serious four-wheel drive. And uh, I've had the tiniest, tiniest taste of Arnhem Land. Uh, I took a, a boat tour down the East Alligator River, and uh, the thing that really uh, gave me great... Um, a great sense of connection was the power of the land of the Arnhem escapement, escarpment. Uh, it's it's rocky country and it's majestic and it's tall and it's unforgiving and it's filled with the mythology of the lightning man. And the, there are um, rock art that goes back thousands of years of lightning man and the mythology associated with lightning man is that he uh, has come down uh, from, uh, what's the name of the river, or the East Alligator, come down from up the top of the Coburg uh, Peninsula, entered the Australian continent and uh, travelled down through the river and he came to rest in the Arnhem Escarpment and with his eyes looking uh, towards Darwin, really, and uh, he holds some spiritual power. And the reason why um, uh, he's there is because this is land not to be disturbed. And of course I found this mythology very disturbing because uh, the white Australians have, have done nothing but disturb this region for uranium uh, for, for decades. Well the uranium mines close now but um, you know what, what um, harm we have unleashed well maybe we're yet to find out. One of the um, hills and I forget the name of this um, starts with an N I know that's a very long word it has the energy of a serpent a rock serpent to me and this one faces the Arnhem Escarpment well, whereas the Arnhem so it faces um, east the Arnhem Escarpment faces west towards Darwin and uh, I think it was a oh, I had a very very strong sense of the power of the land to to um, restore justice and the this um, feeling of potency and aliveness of, of, of national justice and racial justice and environmental justice and spiritual justice it's there in the, um, the red flag dances and I came upon them when I went to the Barunga festival and I'll just include this little clip here for you to get this sort of experience of this living ancient tradition. And they bring it forward. They <laughs> There's something about the um, uh, this living tradition that, that gives great hope to me that we haven't, despite the genocide and the annihilation and the refusal to um, recognise and the ongoing issues of treaty, uh, uh, these people s persist and survive and, and um, bring forward the next generation of mentors and I find this uh, the most brilliant, brilliant sign of hope. Having spent three months in the top end in Central Australia, I moved then into Western Australia and it uh, wasn't long before I headed to Purnalulu, which is part of the Bungle Bungles National Park. And uh, uh, Purnalulu uh, is wild, wild country. Uh, I went to the Cathedral Gorge, the Picaninny Gorge and the Echidna Chasm. And you can see here, as um, from this first image, the um, it just takes your breath away. And to get there is quite a, a feat. Uh, the roads aren't great. There are many river crossings. And uh, walking into ca the Cathedral Gorge, well, it's it's named that for very good purpose. Very good purpose uh, because it's very cathedral-like. And uh, but it is said that the spirit of the Bungle Bungles actually lives in Picaninny Gorge. And uh, I discovered the Rainbow Light 
which um, occasionally comes up in my photographs as a, an image in a picture, uh, a symbol, if you like, of hope and, and of the future. And here's the, uh, the symbol of the, um, the spirit of the Bungle Bungles um, in Pekaneni Gorge. Um, I've known of the Bungle Bungles for um, a long time, but... Uh, and we've gone, myself and colleagues have been to Central Australia um, uh, to visit, um, to, to work with the earth for healing journeys. And uh, we've always done, every time we've been there, uh, I think it might have been 2013 or 2014, maybe the first time I went there, been half a dozen times, we'd do an earth healing service and we'd have various prayers and um, invocations uh, to assist with the... Um, our connection to the heart of this great country and one of the prayers um, invokes the energy of the bungle bungles and I'll just read it to you if I can find it here it is, it's called Spirit of the Dreamtime Spirit of the Dreamtime etched in ancient land I sing my song my song of joy I sing heartbeat of this land I am, I call to one and all, sacred bungle bungles are my home Spirit of the dream time, come to me. Yes, and I certainly felt that I was um, walking in two worlds with the spirit of the dream time and in this um, 21st century, in this time of great um, change for humanity. Yes, and I did go from there out to the echidna chasm where one walks into what feels like the heart of the mother. And a deep immersion. And, and uh, I think I'll leave this um, bit of a talk here, but I hope what it's done is given you um, a cause for pause around wonder in your life because uh, signs of wonder, they're all around us, um, signs of hope for a better world and a better way forward if we would just pay attention to them. And the more we invoke and open and pray, uh, to be connected to the heart of earth and the heart of hope, the more this becomes our living reality as it has become mine this year. And anyway, I've got more of these um, wonderful um, memories of um, inspiration, beauty and hope to share with you when I continue on in the next talk. This has been Chandra Easton, StarAstrologyHealing.com. Lots of links on my website um, to do with the great change and the new earth that um, is descending. That's all. Bye for now.